Sorry guys, 6 a.m. We gotta get the color to the concrete plant so they can put it in the concrete truck. We're gonna get it loaded in the truck. So we're getting at the concrete plant here, arriving at the concrete plant, and we're gonna drop the color off, put it on the truck, then they'll put it in the truck, load the concrete in the truck, and we'll be good. So we're gonna put the color in the truck first, and then they'll batch the truck out. That's the process. That way it gets, it all gets mixed in really good. That's as easy as it is. We just throw them bags right in the back. We got 10 of them today. We got 10 yards we're pouring. So we're gonna throw these 10 bags in. All right, we got the color in. Loading trucks. That's where he loads the trucks right there. Now we're gonna head to the job. I got about a 45 minute ride to get to the job today. All right, so here we are on the job. It's about 6.30 in the morning. Uh, concrete's being loaded, it's on the way. And here's our stamp concrete project for today. It's 28 by 20 patio. We got it all formed up, got it squared. We got two inches of styrofoam under this one and we got a matted rebar in it. It's about five inches thick. So what we got coming is we got 4,000 PSI concrete coming with 3.8 stone and we put some uh, gull gray color in it. And we're gonna stamp this a stone texture today, so I'm just gonna wait for the concrete to show up. I got both trucks here today. It's just me, Darren, and Luke here today. We got uh, everything in the trucks. We're gonna get trucks unloaded. We got straight edges, come along with both boats. Um, I got all the stamping stuff. There's the stamps we're using. Got the release back there. Got our tampers there. So we're gonna get everything unloaded and get it all ready. Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to show you how we pour this concrete slab. This is gonna be for a stamp patio, but this a slab like this could really be used for just about anything. You could could be an addition to a garage, it could be a shed, uh, it could be a standalone garage slab if it wasn't attached to the house. So this is basically how we pour all our slabs on grade is just like this. Now the concrete is colored today like you saw put us coloring but we just put a gray. What happens when 4000 PSI concrete cures out, it kind of cures really light. Not, not white but really really light in color so if you don't want it to cure out really really light then you got to put some gray in it to keep it a little bit darker on the gray side which is what will end up at, at, in the long run you'll see that in video number two part two of this um, when we do the stamping and the cleaning and the sealing so make sure you come on back for that today we're just gonna I'm gonna show you how we pour a slab like this just the three of us you know, when it all starts out like this, back in the truck. Luckily on this one, we could back the truck right to the slab. And we're using just a little bit of a chute extension to reach the other side so we don't have to pull it quite so far. The rebar is up on bricks, so that keeps it up in the middle of the slab. The homeowner actually set this slab up. He formed it up. He got the styrofoam in there. And then he put the forms up and got them all set to grade, so... That, that kind of made our job pretty easy. We just were hired to come in here and pour and stamp the concrete. Like I said earlier in the video, we got 10 yards on that truck. We put 10 bags of integral color in it. And that's pretty normal for what we do with stamp concrete. We add one bag per yard when we use 4,000 PSI. And color comes in all kinds of different forms. You can put it in liquid. You can broadcast it on top. 
Uh, we don't generally broadcast color hardener on top up here where we're from. We just we, we're from Maine. We like to just mix it right in the truck. It's a lot less messier that way. That's a pretty good slump right there. You can see how it's rolling down the chute. Nice, looks good and creamy. It's easy to work with. And generally, you know, what we like to do, the three of us, is we'll get more, a little bit more than three quarters of this concrete poured out, just like we're doing right now. Luke and Darren are kind of raking it and trying to get it as close to the top of the forms as they can by eye. And then we'll use the laser to set set a couple pads in the middle at grade that you'll watch us strike the strike the slab off with. Right now both guys are kind of raking the concrete around. We call this kind of tuning it in, breaking it down and tune it in. And then uh, usually one guy will kind of drop back and he'll start mag floating around the edges. One thing that's good about the three of us is we all we all kind of know what to do and we all can do pretty much everything so one guy it doesn't matter who's doing what everybody knows knows how to do it and what to do which that's basically just experience right there but that, what that does that leads to nobody really needs to talk on the job so the job sites are actually pretty quiet for us um, no one's no one's yelling and barking and giving orders is that what it's like where you work? Let me know down in the comments if it's like that. You can see how we just moved the truck ahead maybe a couple feet at a time. And then that makes it a little bit easier for the guys raking the concrete, pushing it and pulling it into place. Um, might as well let the truck shoot do most of the work. And then all we got to do is just kind of knock it down, knock the high stuff down, try to get it as close to grade as possible. You can see Luke's going back up in there and he's kind of raking it out a little bit. He thinks it's high. And I'm just moving the chute at a slow and steady pace. You know, we don't want to run the concrete too fast. Then the guys won't be able to keep up. But we also, we don't want to run it too slow and have it take too long to get this unloaded. So there's a little bit of a little bit of a learning curve there about what speed works good for just unloading the concrete out of the truck. A good driver helps too. You know, he, if he can just if he can just move the truck without jerking it and paying attention to you when you're telling him to go, you know, he goes and he doesn't have to wait four or five seconds. And the concrete usually doesn't get built up too high. There, yeah, and then he shuts it off when you ask him to shut it off too, because <laughs> there's always a little bit extra that runs down the chute after you shut it off. So, so we left a little bit open there in case we're high up in there, we can pull it into that low spot. But what we'll do now is, you know, a couple guys will jump on the edges, get them all magged out. And then I'm shooting a pad with a laser. This pad, because it's a patio, it kind of slopes away from the house a couple inches. So up there where Darren's magging up against the house is an inch higher than where I made that pad in the middle. And then it slopes down another inch where Luke just magged there away from the house. Wait till you see what this looks like after we get done stamping and cleaning it. This thing's gonna gonna look amazing. So make sure, you know that uh, that'll be in part two. When part two comes out, I'll have a link for that, you know, in the description of this video and at the end of the video, so you can make sure you check out, you know, how we get it stamped. Did we use powder? Did we use release? Did we saw cut it? You know, all that kind of stuff. You see, I'm making two pads because the screed we got, I think we're using a 12 foot screed today. And if I remember right, this was around 30 feet, so we needed a couple pads in the middle to be able to reach both from one side to the other. 
That's a magnesium screed board too. That's not a two by four. We uh, we tend to use the magnesium ones. They're pretty light, basically as light as aluminum. Now I'm going right off top of the board there on the right, and then Luke's going off the pad from the laser, and then that gives us something to go by now in the middle as we as we continue to screed this. Yeah, you can see how that rhythm works. I jump right outside. I'm just trying to match Luke's rhythm, whatever, however speed he wants to go. And then, you know, some guys will pull a longer stroke than others with the screed. So I'm just trying to match whatever he's doing and not get ahead of him, that's for sure. Make his life as easy as possible <laughs> when he's the one in there kicking and screeding. And then Darren's just trying to keep the concrete, you know, making sure, he's making sure the concrete doesn't get low, but he's trying not to let it build up too high either. We call that a bay right there. So that's about a 12 foot by 12 foot bay. And then we're up here, we'll jump up here in this bay and get this pulled down. Greeding is kind of like learning to ride a bike. It's a little bit difficult at first, but once you do learn it, it's easy, and it's you never forget how to do it. Um, you guys, how many of you guys have ever screeded? And if you do, have you ever done it the way we do, while we kick, while we move backwards, so you don't have to keep stopping? I know there's a bunch of guys that like to just screed by themselves too, with one one person on the screed. I don't know, we do that when the screeds, when we use a shorter screed board, we'll do that by ourselves, but usually anything 10 feet long or longer like this one, we'll just put two guys on it. It's just, for us, it's a heck of a lot easier. And I th personally, I think it's a lot faster too. We're just taking our time here, basically. We're not hurrying, so. I mean, if we really wanted to go fast, we could we could pick up the pace a little bit. Yeah, we got it a little bit low up in there, so Luke and I are just pushing a little bit more mud back up in there. I think we'll run a little bit more out of the truck too. It really doesn't take too long to get a slab like this screeded. You know, this would make a really good garage slab too. But to get the screeding down, you know, that's probably that's probably the hardest part of pouring a slab like this is actually screeding it and getting it so there's no high points and no low points. The rest of it's not too bad, you know, dumping it out of the truck, raking it around, magging the edges. And then you'll see here in a minute, you know, bull floating it smooth. That's not too bad. Now, if this were going to be a finished slab, like a garage, <clears throat> we'd end up power troweling this. But for now, what we'll do is we'll get it bull floated. And then you'll see in the next video what happens after we bull float it. I also teach people how to do this if you didn't know that there's a link for the concrete underground down in the description of the video so if you want to learn how to do concrete stuff or even just learn how to do a slab I got all those training videos inside there plus I'm in there you know to help answer questions so feel free to check that out it's the concrete underground down in the description and you can join that it's a monthly fee so well, you can stay one month you could stay a year if you want it doesn't matter but there's all kinds of different types of training in there. There, so we definitely weren't too high. So we gotta we gotta add a little bit more concrete here. Get this thing finished up. And then I'm gonna run the bull float over it like this. What we like about running the bull float over it, we use the bull float with the rounded edges too, so it doesn't it tends not to leave 
like big lines on each side. That thing's about four feet long. But it pushes down the aggregate. You can see the aggregate still there right on the surface from screeding. It pushes that aggregate down just a little bit. Settles it a little bit. Brings up some pace so it leaves you a nice smooth for surface for stamping. And then there's usually one more step we do before we start stamping. But I'll show you that on the next one too. See how nice and smooth that gets, just going down one and back. That's a really nice concrete mix there. That's, like I said, it's a 4,000 psi mix, but it's also got the 3 8 aggregate, so it's got a little bit smaller stone. We usually use a three quarter. If this was a garage slab, we'd use a three quarter inch aggregate. But we like to stamp the smaller aggregate. It's a little bit easier to stamp for us. There, now I'm just going to finish up bow floating, and Darren's going to you know, just go around and take out my marks from the bow float that I didn't get right on the edge. And then uh, right here, I'm going to show you right here at the end of the video, just a little bit of the stamping process. So you can see what you're going to be able to, to watch in the next video coming up. But whenever you stamp, if you if you do have a stamp, you know, getting this thing bow floated really, really nice is, is one of the most important parts. Because the next step you're going to do, you know, is really going to make the difference between a good looking stamp and a, and a you know, an unprofessional looking stamp. So I'm going around making sure I'm filling everything in really, really good right here. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of... All right, so here's Luke and Darren. They're they're getting on with the stamps, but this is what's going to be in the next video, guys. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Like these type of videos. Please hit the like button, and we'll come back and check out the next video. Thanks for watching. And then you're going to have to wait until it's ready. You just can't go stamping in